because I really don't know what I would do if I didn't have some work that I had to get to. Hello, hello, hello. This is Shirley Crawford, the owner of Second Chance Consulting and the executive director of the Women's Business Center, RBA, coming to you once again with another episode of Work Hardaholics. So this is take two. You don't know that yet, but uh, I do. So, those of you who are joining us for the first time, welcome, 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 welcome. You might be asking yourself, what exactly is a work hardaholic? Well, let me tell you, because I made that term up. A work hardaholic is someone who is always doing something. We don't rest on our laurels. We don't let life pass us by. We're here to get things to accomplish, and we're not ashamed of it, and we're not apologizing anymore. And for those of you out there who are work hardaholics, welcome back. Welcome to your tribe. Here's where you don't have to apologize for the fact that if you're like me, it's Sunday afternoon, and I am in the office. No apologies. That's the way it goes. We have things to get done, but we want to make sure that while we're working hard, we're playing harder, that we're living in balance. That's what we're here for. We spend a few minutes together discussing books, time tool techniques, things you need to know, some things that'll make your life go smoother as you're doing all those wonderful things that you're doing. All right, so we're going to start the way that we always do. We start with the word for the week. And the word for this week is buoyancy. And so how I even come to this you know, term for now is because it's 2020 at the time of this recording, and it hasn't been for long. And I've really been thinking about the fact that you know, life comes at you. Like a lot of you are still sitting going, I can't believe 2019 is over. Well, it is. Time to move on. And other than you, I, I, in simpler terms, when you look at life in general, right? So everyone always says, go with the flow, you know, just just go with it. But here is the thing. Water, which is normally what we're flowing with, right? It can be peaceful. You can walk along the edge of the beach. I love the beach. Or you can listen to the, the waves crashing. It feels very soothing. It feels very soothing until those, those waves are crashing on top of you and you're surrounded and they're coming so fast that you can't breathe. The next thing you know, you're underwater. Um, that's when water doesn't sound so great. Doesn't seem like such a great friend. And so those are the moments that you need to be able to float to the top or bounce back. Um, and so... If you look at the beach or, you know, if you're looking at the ocean, wherever you are, um, there are normally these buoys, right? Can you tell buoy and buoyancy are in the same family? Of course you can. And so no matter what the water does, they keep, they stay at the top. They stay at the top. They use the water to keep them afloat so that they don't just go running off someplace, but they stay at the top. And that's what we want for you. So buoyancy, especially in 2020, so like vision, 2020 vision. Buoyancy means, to say it's our word for the week, buoyancy. Buoyancy means just that. It's your ability to bounce back. It's your ability to float. It's your ability to stay above, especially with regards to water. But it applies to like in so many other aspects of your life. How, how able are you that no matter what life is doing to stay on top, right? To keep your head and stay on top. So that's what we want for you in 2020, for you to have buoyancy. Bounce back. And so in the art of bouncing back, um, I actually want to talk about our time tool technique because with everything coming at you the way that it's coming, it's really important that you stay ahead of the information. You stay ahead of the game, especially if you're an entrepreneur, like we know, you can't afford to find out information after everyone's done it. It doesn't benefit you. So you have to be the alpha. You have to be the beta. You have to be the one that's out there in the front, the leader of the pack with the information, with the new tool, with new tip. Um, you have to be the one that if you wrote a trademark for it, you know there's limitation and you already have the edit to it so that you can continue forth with your next trademark or next um, licensing, copywriting, whatever. So you can stay ahead of those who are going to imitate you because you did such a marvelous thing. With that in mind, um, one of the tools that I, I always tell you, every millionaire, every billionaire, um, when they're giving a list of tools and techniques of successful individuals, like number one or number two is always books, 
read books, read biographies in particular, or where they always recommend. But um, the point is to stay ahead of the education curve. There was someone who once said, if you ever want to hide information from someone, put it in a book. That always stuck with me. Yeah. So there's an app that, that you can have it on your, I have it on my computer. You can have it on your phone. It's called Goodreads. And so Goodreads, it's, it's kind of like, like I have a physical bookshelf over here. It's your digital bookshelf. So you can have, you can rate books that you want people to, you know, see and note whether or not they should be reading them. So I just created my Goodreads account for Shirley at WBCRVA.com. I have another. I'm not sharing that one with you. And so the simple truth of it is, is that because life is so serious and there are all kinds of things going on, I do a bunch of goofy stuff, right? You, maybe you can tell, maybe you can't. Some people think I'm extremely serious. I guess I am. Um, but I need mental breaks. And so that's why I, I read a bunch of stuff that's stupid. I mean, just stupid. I um, enjoy movies that are goofy. Not a lot. Just enough to break it up so that I can have some peace of mind and not have to think while I'm watching or reading. I have a bunch of things that I do that are extremely serious, especially in my reading and my literature. Um, as you can see from the book I've recommended. But I keep that separate. That's Goofy Shirley time. That's not our time. That's my time. And so I'm creating, I'm curating a list. So I'll have mine up. I don't know when. Sometime soon. Maybe before the month is over. Um. So that you'll see the books I've re referred to you before and some others that I might add on. Or I might add them on as I add them on in these episodes. We shall see. But if you're on Goodreads as well, you can share your list with me. So that's going to be at Shirley at WBCRVA.com. So feel free to uh, recommend or highlight a book to me. And maybe we'll share it on here. So drop me a note and say, hey, Shirley, here's a book. Or you can share your shelf in Goodreads. The thing for you, though... When it comes to your time tool technique, Goodreads actually has a challenge going on. It's the beginning of the year, and they'll help you stay on task. So if you just want to read one book a month for the year, you can sign up and do the challenge, and it'll actually send you reminders and help you count. Do take notes for those of you like me and have privacy issues. If you sign up with your Amazon account, then it tracks anything you're reading on Kindle. So that automatically goes into your Goodreads shelf. If you want it or not, just know. I just want you to know. If you sign up with Facebook, it's kind of the same thing. So if you recommend a book there, then you can. But it also makes it easier for you to track. So it can be very helpful or it can be a privacy issue. Eh, depends on your viewpoint. And on that note, that takes me to our book it moment. Book it, Dano. So the book that I want to share this week is not a book that I've read. But going along with my theme of buoyancy, and because our time tool technique is a Goodreads, this was a book that was on someone else's Goodreads shelf. So I'm sharing it with you. Um, and if you want me to share your shelf, remember, tell me, and I'll say your name and all that good stuff, and say, hey, so-and-so recommended this from their shelf. And so the book is called, can you guess it? Bounce Back. I told you it was all, all about the theme. Um, it's by Susan Kahn. While I, while the part, so I haven't read it yet, but the part that I found fascinating is that it talks about how to fail fast and be resilient in the workplace. I'm pretty sure I got that right. Not totally sure, but I think so. The part that I wanted to point out is the fail fast. We haven't talked about that before. And it's a really important thing, to, a technique to know. So it doesn't mean that you won't fall. It doesn't mean that you won't do something wrong. I do crazy stuff all the time and I have to go. I can't believe you did that. And so, like right now, I'm kind of tired still. I'm, that vacation, that real vacation is still coming. I'm still a little bit on the burnt outside. And there's a lady whose name, I've said it wrong every time I've seen her in the past month. So, it's a fail. It's an epic fail. But I had to own it. So, that's what you do. Fail fast. When you make an error, you make a mistake, accept it. Don't dwell in it. And if you're going to dwell on it, then dwell on it. And then move on. Like, have a timeline. I always tell people, nothing wrong with having an emotion. Have the emotion. You have every right to live in that moment. Be in that moment. But at some point, you have to say, I give myself a month. I give myself three months. I'm going to deal with this. And I'm going to be here. And I'm not going to care about what anyone else feels about me being here. I'm going to do what I need to do. But then I'm also going to have a healthy plan to pick myself up and move on. That's what failing fast is all about. So you give people, in, in workplaces, you give people an opportunity to try something very quickly with a small test case or a test sample, not have to spend a million dollars, and they can see if it works in the marketplace or some smaller version of the marketplace. So you can have a small fail. It's a quick fail 
without having to go through a lot of money to make it happen. So fail fast, but then move on. So that brings us to the end for today. Always a pleasure to hang out with you all. Have an amazing 2020. I'll see you next week. And as always, live better, do better, be better, and happy entrepreneuring. Ta-ta. Because I really don't know what I would do if I didn't have some work that I had to get to. Da-da-da-da-da-da.